fungus gnats are your number one primary concern in, in insect control. Uh, so you, again, sanitation's your best friend in planting early. Uh, make sure you're algae free, put up some sticky cards and, and monitor your moisture because we don't want to then develop uh, excess moisture in our media, growing some algae and then having a source of food uh, on our propagation media. Um, you know, this is the time you want to apply some maybe IGRs. Uh, this is also a great time to deploy nematodes. Uh, nematodes at a long-term crop like this, uh, it just seemed to really make sense uh, for especially targeting that larva stage that's going to be your challenge. It's not so much the adults, it's the larva going to be eating away the inside of that bottom tip of that callus or that poinsettia right there. So just a little tips on doing that. If you are looking or trying to uh, uh, use nematodes in your situation, you want to apply them either in the morning or the afternoon when it's a little coolest in your greenhouse. Uh, make sure that you take any fit, uh, 50 mesh filters off your uh, injection equipment, right? And don't be using any high pressure injection equipment. So a, a regular injector is fine, but you don't want to use a high injection pump to, uh, and anything above, something below 300 PSI. PSI. Um, and then make sure you're agitating that solution regularly. And don't forget to rinse out that, you know, just like you would uh, any chemical triple rinse at the very end of using it, make sure you're rinsing out that tray or whatever you're using uh, to then put into your regular four gallon bucket for injection, uh, just getting every little bit of that, that nematode in solution. Yeah, I think they're great. I think they work great. Um, I think one of the, 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 the biggest challenges uh, is- when I, when I say cooler in the afternoon, I really mean late evening when that sun is kind of uh, crested and started to cool off. Yep, yep. It's just, uh, um, just you can never get dry. I mean, in propagation, it's I think it's wonderful. Um, they're great and finished too, but you just can't get dry. They die. And, and building off of what Jason said for medium moisture, really when you go to apply any of these sorts of things, it's just like a normal PGR uh, drench. You wanna be at a medium moisture of about a three. So it's gonna accept it in and distribute out. You don't wanna uh, apply it to where it's sloshing over or spilling out and leaching as well. So you want a little bit of moisture in there. You want to be about a three and go up to a four. Here's just some examples of some other biocontrols that you can use in your propagation area. Um, you know, there's predators that you can then use as well as your nematodes. And, and then we also have, of course, your um, biological uh, uh, funguses as well to attack some of your insects. And all this information and a lot of chemicals uh, uh, charts that we recommend that can be used on poinsettias at its various stages can be found in the sort uh, in the Selecta One catalog. So your best resource really is our catalog for poinsettias, as well as a culture guide, as well as online at SelectaNorthAmerica.com. Uh, in stage one disease control, uh, your primary uh, uh, problems are going to be Irwinia and Botrytis. Irwinia can be your primary and then Botrytis end up following it. So kind of know what's coming first, the chicken or the egg, because that can lead to uh, what you're actually trying to target here. Um, I guess preventative controls. Uh, so, you know, applying some fungicides in the early stages uh, to prevent Botrytis from developing in that high humidity situation, low light area, that would be a good strategy. And, and also balancing your mist. So we're not, you know, during the low light situation of the nighttime and, and, and evening, you're not just putting excess water out there uh, tremendously. And I think this is a good time to talk about water treatment options as well. Um, uh, you can mitigate uh, a lot of these issues by having some sort of sanitizing agent, either or not. Uh, uh, an oxygen uh, peroxide type based product or uh, chlorine or the chlorine dioxides or uh, copper ionizations. But bottom line, uh, treated sanitized water will help prevent this. It'll also help prevent the spread uh, of the pathogens or the, 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 the um, diseases as they get, get started here. To your point earlier, having, you know, if you have a situation where you have the nozzles directed down, they're forcing 
potentially that Irwinia will travel to its neighbor as opposed to having a light mist just fall on top of the cuttings, therefore not pushing that issue to its neighbors. I think that's a, that's a good point. It's just general, general propagation strategy, but very relevant and, and hyper uh, important on point set is, is to try to avoid the lateral movement of water. A lot of bad things move through water and we don't want that water moving from plant to plant. We want it moving from irrigation device to the, to the plant and to the medium and then out the drain. So, uh, or recaptured, but uh, you do not want to uh, spread water laterally.